All right. Aaron in the building. What's going on, my man? Oh, man, can't call it, man. Just out here. I'm on home time right now, but I'm just chilling in South Detroit. Just chilling out here where I work at. Okay, okay. So, you know, I caught you in a, in a Facebook. That was a Facebook post that I caught you in, right? Oh uh, no, that that was the the uh, the YouTube the oh, comments. Oh section. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, I got. I I just yeah. want to make sure I get it right. Just want to make sure I get it right. All right. So I caught you in a video, and you was talking about uh, you got terminated from Landstar, right? Correct. Okay. Okay. So uh, before we uh, talk about that, how how long you been driving all together, my G? Well, started in September 2016, so it'd be five years this September, on and off with different companies. But yeah, five years. Oh, okay, okay. Which which route did you go to get your your license? You went through a company or you went to school? Went through a company, went through Swift, and they put me through uh, 160 driving. Okay, wait, wait. You went through a comp. What was the company? Well, Smith Transportation. Wait, Smith Transportation? No. Oh, Swift. Swift. Swift tra yeah, oh, okay, yeah. okay, okay. All right. So you 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 applied for Swift to get your CDL. Uh-huh. And they they, uh -huh. they 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 sent you to what's the name of the truck driving school? 160, 160 driving school. Oh, okay. Where where are you located at, my G? Chicago. All right. And where's 160 driving school located at? Oh, uh, the one they sent me to was right there in South Island. Oh, okay. So that was in Illinois. That wasn't too far from you. No, nah, no, nah, it wasn't. No. Nah. Okay. So it kind of, I guess it kind of worked out good for them. Was you. Wait, was you? Did they have you set up in a in a, in a hotel and all that good stuff, or you or you just went back and forth uh, throughout the day? You went home. Yeah, went back and forth. Yeah, went back because it wasn't too far from where I live at. So just hop in my car, drive over there, do the little eight hours, and head back to the crib, and did that for like thirty days for a month. All right. So you went to uh, you 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 went to the uh, driving school and. You got out in a, at at the end of the month. How was it? What was your experience like doing the driving school? How, in other words, how many people, you know, how many people Swift brought in there, and then how many people that was left out when when y'all got your CDL? Hmm, I think it was about seven people in the classroom. Only six of us was going to Swift, and um. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know who actually passed and actually went to Swift. I, I know, um, I think it was about at least two, two or three people, including myself, that actually passed everything and went. So I don't know what happened to the other guys. So, yeah. oh, okay, okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. All right, so uh, you know, jumping in, jumping into Swift. What what was your experience at Swift like after you got your license? Oh, it was decent, man. I I stayed there for for a year and a year and uh, three months. I mean, I did a company. I can't really complain about them. They gave me a chance. You know, I can't really. I know it's a lot of negative things about Swift, but I mean, it was good to me. I can't complain. All right. So when you when you got out of school and you got into got into Swift, of course, you went out with a trainer for uh for a little bit. What was your what was your CPM after your training with with uh with Swift? I think it was thirty eight cents. Oh, okay, now this this of course is back in twenty sixteen where where <laughs> coming in at in the thirties was was the normal, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right, so you had to you you now during that time did they. Did they make you like sign like a contract or something like that for the obligations for sending you through school? Yeah. All right. So how was now? How did that now? Back in 2016, I'm going to assume that it was kind of different than what it is now. 
how they got it set up. So during that time, what was the contract like? I mean, did they did they like tell you the what was the ins and out of of the contract? If if you don't mind saying. Well, if I remember, um, they told me that if I didn't complete, I think I would have to pay that like five G's or something like that. Mm-hmm. Like I, I, I think some I, I forget all the details because it's been so long ago. But I, I, I think it was about five thousand dollars that I would have to pay back if I didn't complete um, the contract with Swift. They want me to stay there at least a year. You know how that goes with the just pay back the money that I owed them for sending me to school. So, if I remember. All right. So you can at least you 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 can actually at least say that they was pretty good for you for that for that entire year and a half. If that was the case, then why did you leave? Looking for better work, looking for more money, want to try something different. I mean, Swift was cool, but they weren't perfect. I mean, it's still a mega carrier, so you got to deal with the the mega the mega carrier stuff. BS. So, All right, so within the five years, man, you say you've been on and off different companies. How many companies all together before Landstar? Let's see. Well, of course, that was Swift, so that's one. Then I went to a local company. That's two. Then I did another local company. That was three. Then I did J.B. Hunt. And then I did uh, Schneider. And then I went back to J.B. Hunt, and that's when I did uh, Landstar. So I guess I went to J.B. Hunt twice, so not including them twice. It's all companies, I think. All right. So, my G, I mean, I I know it's all about, you know, looking for that for that sweet spot, for that comfort zone. Uh, yeah. What was the reason for, you know, bouncing – for bouncing that many companies? Well, the the second company I went to after Swill, I did local. And the only reason why I did that was because, one, they were near where I lived at. And, two, when I was driving for Swill, a lot of guys were like, man, you should do local. You make more money. Right, right. You're home more often and all that. Right. right. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, still, I'm still new, so I'm like, okay, let me go ahead and try that out. Okay. So I went there and did it, and I, and I lasted a week. <laughs> I couldn't do it, man. I could not do it. Wait, wait, wait. No, you, you know, you know what they say. Local is 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 the end all be all for for some of these drivers that's actually coming into the game. They like, yo, I I don't want to do OTR. I don't want to do regional. I want to do local. And some local oh. companies, not all, but some, you know, they they would let you in the gate you know, right out of the gate, right out of the school, you know, so that's a myth yeah. that, that's been going around for years. They saying that, oh, you got to drive OTR before you go local, and that's not always the case. I mean, if you do your due diligence and do your research, you can find a local company to right out of the gate, but uh-huh. but that but that's what they, you know, but that's what they said, go local, you know, you're home more, you make more, uh, you know, you said you only last a week. What happened? Yeah, we. <laughs> well, they they put me on the on the night shift, uh, oh. and I, I was able to do it for like two days. But running night, it, it just ain't my thing, man. I, I just was never used to driving a day cab. Mm-hmm. Running nights, I found myself falling asleep. They didn't have no other uh, no other contracts for me to do in the daytime. So that's pretty much it. But then I, I just realized, like, man, I, I don't like this day cap stuff. I, I just, it, it just wasn't for me. The pay was all right. I did make a little bit more money with them than I did with Swift. But it, it's a whole overall local thing. It just wasn't for me. So you said that. So you said that local. <laughs> you said, you yeah, said that I, day cap <laughs> just wasn't for you, huh? No, no. No, every time I look back there, I, I – I'm so used to being in a, a truck with a sleeper in the right. bed in the back. I, right. I, I just couldn't. Yeah. Now, <laughs> you you work you you drive at nights, man. What what did you have to deliver at at night? Like at the restaurants or the 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 
the stores? What 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 you was hauling that required you to drive through the night? It was a transmission, a automotive transmission for Honda. No, no, it was for Chrysler. My bad, it was for Chrysler. Hey, you, automotive transmission. For Chrysler. You you can deliver that stuff during the day. <laughs> no, I thought oh, I I asked them. They, I show sure asked them. I think they they base it off of seniority. Mm-hmm. So all the new drivers, they got to do the night shift, and then once you get there, a certain number of years, I guess. Oh, then they'll then, to the, then, to the they'll, then they'll move you up. No, nah, we we. Nah, we 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 need we need day shift. We need day yeah, shift. I, I think I I think I can I I drive nights. I think I can handle it as much. But I mm-hmm. I think I I think if I had to do it on a regular basis, then no. You know, like for for example, I you know I got up at around one o'clock this morning, so I can get an early start. But that's the time that i choose you see what i'm saying what? you know i wanted what? you know i knew i had to be down here in north carolina at a at a certain time so i figured i would get to jump on traffic and all this other bullshit that we you know that we occur so far all bro all of the way stations are open and i had to hit every last one of them so <laughs> that shit uh, that shit is crazy yeah. in itself right there so but uh but yeah I, I i choose to you know to ride out at night i i don't think if it was a regular thing for me then no i i don't think i would i would be able to i would be able to do that and then trying to get some sleep in the day cab is kind of <laughs> it's kind of cramped up in there <laughs> yeah yeah that is, that is. Got to pop, try to pop your leg up, and you got that space in between the feet. Yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> so, my G, you 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 made the YouTube video. Um, mm-hmm. You 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 was you was with Landstar. Now, Landstar is uh, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, Landstar is leasing, right? Uh, no, I think they they are uh, owner operator company only. You can have a pay in off truck or a lease truck, however you want to do it, but they only hire owner. Okay, so you so w- what was your position with with uh Landstar? Was was you uh was you leasing? I mean, not leasing, but you was you was working for owner op or you was the owner op. Oh uh, yeah, I was the uh, owner. I, I well, I leased the truck. I know it's, people tend to be kind of finicky with that whole owner out thing and you leasing the truck. But yeah, I was leasing the truck, and uh, I went to land stuff. So. Oh, okay. So you so instead of instead of uh, leasing on with uh, with different company, you you actually went and actually brought a lease from a trucking company, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Let's uh let's back up on that, man. What um what I'm I'm gonna assume you you went in a leasing when you went with JB Hunt or was it Snyder? No. No, no, I was a, a company driver up until the point I decided to go to land stop. Oh, okay, okay. Now where did where when when was it when you decided to go, you know, the 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 buy your truck? And which outlet did you go to get get your truck from? Uh, I think I started thinking about it probably around June of last year. It was on my mind a lot. I was doing some research, uh, and by the time December rolled around, I decided to go through uh, SFI, and I leased the truck through them in December of last year. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, what was? I'm not trying to be too nosy, but you know this information could help you know someone else that might be interested instead of going with a company to lease one of their trucks you know mm-hmm. it, you know you went outside of the box you know with some you know what some people don't do so being that you mm-hmm. you went outside of the box uh, talk to me and tell me how how did that come up did you save up the money did your was your credit on point uh, 
you know, what, you know, what was it, you know, how, you know, how the process worked up until you actually got in the seat of your truck and actually start driving? Well, I didn't really save up too much money. I think I saved up probably about five thousand dollars or something like that. Okay. Uh, the deposit that I the deposit that I put down for this truck was only fifteen hundred, and I think they do run your credit, but they're not really looking at your credit score per se. They're really just looking to make sure that you don't have no bankruptcy, no back child support, make sure you're not recently divorced, you know, stuff like that. And uh, they checked all that. Everything came back clear. I put down the fifteen hundred. And that was it. All right. So you so you said you had five. Where you mustered yeah. where, where you mustered up the extra ten? You you just saved it or or what? No, I just I just saved up five thousand. I didn't know I didn't know how much money I needed to put down. So right. I decided I just start with five k and see what happens. All right, and but they you, told me all that. But you put down fifteen k. I'm just trying to figure out where you got the extra ten from. Oh no, no, I, no. I I put down fifteen hundred. Oh, fifteen hundred. Oh, fifteen. That's what I'm talking about. Fifteen hundred. Yeah. But you fit. Oh, okay, okay. Here we go. So you saved yeah, yeah. up five k, but you only put down fifteen, yeah. huh? How much was the truck? Uh, how much was the damn truck? I think it was about a hundred. One forty, I think it was. Whoa, whoa, <laughs> hold up, my G! <laughs> oh, you must got that dynamite credit to put down fifteen hundred, bro. <laughs> no, I, I don't know. I tell you, too, this, this truck right here is used. I think that used truck they don't look well. At least at the time, because you know now I'm hearing, I'm hearing dudes got to drop down like five thousand, ten thousand for a deposit. Yeah, but well, at the well, time, yo, your truck is the, wait. A used, yo, used truck, how many miles was on it? 140, 140K. 140K? And, and, the, yeah. and the used truck was still in the six, in the six figures? Yeah, that's how, that's how this company works. Now, a lot of, <gasps> a lot of drivers, that, I mean, leasing, leasing it is not, I mean, <laughs> that's why a lot of people say you shouldn't lease the truck, but I, it, it, it's working out for me. You know, like I said about leasing, man, I mean, well, you, you outside, you know, you outside the box. So you, you leasing from a regular trucking, uh, a regular truck dealership. I'm, I'm, you know, I don't know if it is, it isn't, but I'm just going outside the box with you. So with that, you know, you're able to take your truck any and everywhere you want to go that's that's another benefit of leasing a truck outside of the box because if you lease a truck from like prime snyder jb hunt you know once you once you leave them you leave the truck and it and all the money that you put into it you know that sometimes you know sometimes that's like that's that's kind of crazy you know I, i i i try to see the understanding in that while somebody will go and lease a truck from, you know, from them companies. And then, you know, mm-hmm. let's just say something happened, like in the case, like in your case, you know, let's say something happened, they, you know, they they let you go or whatever the case may be, you know, you, you had to end up leaving the truck and all that uh, and all the money that you put into it. So for you, yeah. for you going outside of the box like you did, like, oh, okay, well, yeah, all right, I still got my truck. I'm cool. <laughs> But damn, though. I mean, I mean, the thing is, the thing is, you can't take it just anywhere. Like they do have restrictions. Oh, okay. On where you could take, take the truck. Now I don't know. I, I guess they don't allow you to take it to like really small companies, but I guess like medium size to, of course, the big companies you can. Okay. But, I mean, I, where I'm at here, this is a, uh, I guess a medium sized company. They didn't have a problem with me bringing it here, so. Oh, okay, I did, so, have to drop, I did have to drop another deposit though. Oh, okay, so you had to, so you had to abide by their, you know, list of companies that they work with, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, pretty. Yeah. Oh, okay. I mean, okay. you can't take it. To, they do, I think they do got a wide list of people you can take it to, but for the most part, you just can't take it just you know well. I'm like, like the truck was paid for it. If I had the title, then yeah, I can take it wherever I want. Right. But because it's still under a lease, 
yeah, you you pretty much had to work, you know, work with who they who they working with pretty much. How uh what was the process for you to get your uh well do you well do you have your authority? No. No, I've been looking into it though. I've been back and forth with it. Okay. But no, I don't have authority. So what was the process for you getting your LLC? No, I don't have that either. Oh, you don't have your LLC? No. Bro. I thought about that too. Yeah, no, don't think about I, that, I, man. Get that together, man. No, don't I, slack well, on I mean, your the, the, the authority the authority you don't have to you know, the authority you don't you can still put some thought in that because you know, as of right now, you just leasing the truck and it's not fully yours yet. But when it becomes yours, then authority would be the next step in in you know in what you want to do but bro yo you, you come on now wait how if you don't have your llc but do you, you don't if you don't have your llc but you do have everything else right you know like your mc number your dot number and all like that you you got that right no i don't have my own authority I mean, I looked there. I mean, the, the LLC thing, I thought about getting it, but when I looked into it, I was talking to some tax people, and okay. they told me there's no point in getting it based on how I want to run. They say you just you just spending unnecessary money, some tax time that I don't really need to spend. So I just filed as a I filed as a sole prop. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So you yeah. did get your EIN number though, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I got that. Oh, okay, okay. All right, well, that's what's that's what's up, man. That's what's up. All right, so Landstar, man, uh, you 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 got with Landstar. You went through the orientation and everything. How how long was the orientation with them? Two days. All right, so you know, of course you didn't have to come in and 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 do all that other crazy stuff that new people, you know, like drivers like us would go through with the process of onboard uh onboarding, but did they offer you a, a sign on bonus or anything like that? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, okay. What what was the reason why you chose Landstar in the first place? Man, there's so many videos out there. I since it was my first time leasing the truck and first time going out on my own, man, I said what, what company out there can I try to learn as much as I can? And I just seen video after video after video of Landstar. Okay. Thinking about it for a few months, I said, I'm going to rock with them, try to stay with them for a year, you know, get my head in the game, learn the industry, learn the lanes and all that. Mm -hmm. And if I decide to leave, you know, I go somewhere else. But, yeah, they, they kind of they, they push that for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but when you yeah. got but when you got with Landstar and everything um, did, did, I, I know with Landstar you able to get on their on their loan uh, on their load board and, and choose your own loads how 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 was um, that like it was cool real easy to use you do it through your phone they got an app mm -hmm. it was real easy did they have did they have some 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 pretty good loads? I mean, I, I by the looks of the video, it looked like you've been there for a little bit. So, uh, some pretty good loads to give you some uh, some good settlements. Uh, yeah. I'm, I mean, I was still new. I was only there for two months. Mm -hmm. But uh, I mean, if I had been there longer, then eventually I would have, you know, found the, the lanes with the good loads. But the loads I was pulling, I mean, it was okay. I picked a lot of pretty bad loads, even if it was paying good. It just had me sitting for long periods of time. Oh, that's but, not good, bro. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's that's not good. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it, it was a, it was more of a learning process for me. Right. That's why I was just really trying to learn the lanes and learn the, the board and all that. So what was your what was your average uh what was your average sediment was looking like as a new guy? Uh, I would say about three k a week. Okay, well that's that's still not bad. Well, that's three k gross. They subtract yeah. subtract everything else. What you what you was bringing home? Uh, 
Well, the BK was with the fuel out, so the only thing I had to pay was really just the taxes on it. So that 3K was the, the take-home before taxes. Oh, okay, okay, that's what's yeah. up. Well, that's shit. And, and including the bad lows that you was that you was taking, you were still generating about 3K? That ain't bad, bro. A good learning yeah. experience, you know? Yeah, that's, that's really all I was there for, trying to learn as much as I can. All right, so mm -hmm. so so let's let's get into it, man. What what happened? What I mean, it looked like you was doing so well with Landstar, man. I mean, you three k a week. You learning. You still, you know, getting your feet wet with the company. What happened, mm -hmm. bro? Well, I don't know. For some reason, <clears throat> during my time that I was working for him, I was going through a lot of uh, mental issue i don't know why i was like part through the happened oh. like the first week i got out there i don't know where it came from and it only happened in last so i've been driving trucks almost five years and last so i was the only company that they happened with so i was going through a lot mm -hmm. and uh this one particular day i had booked a load um it was a friday that load would not pick up until monday and i was only like 150 miles away so i knew i would have to sit over the weekend <sighs> Wow. Like for some reason, I always had a habit. Yeah, I always had a habit of picking those kind of loads. I really didn't like doing that. But it, nevertheless, it, 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 I went you, you saw it, you you saw it on Friday. You had it was only 150 miles away, and they still wanted you to come and pick it up on Monday. Yeah, I tried to see. It. I tried to look for loads earlier. I tried to look for like loads I could pick up either that day, Friday, or even Saturday. But I couldn't find nothing because I. I was ready to go home. I was trying to get a load going back up there to Chicago. Okay. Yeah, I already had been out for a month at this point. I was real tired. I was ready to hit the go to the crib. Right. You needed. So that was a you, close you needed to reset. You you needed to reset. Yeah. Man. You know you you um mm -hmm. you need you needed to reset. And I I think I can I think I can feel you on your on your mental aspect, man. I mean, you've been out. You've been running. You know what I'm saying? You're getting tired. You're getting lethargic. You know, it's it's you know you want to see your family. You know, you just feel in some kind of way. It's 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 time to get back home and 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 refuel, refresh, re you know rejuvenize to get back into the truck. So I I think I can understand where you're coming from. And you said that all your problems didn't come until you actually got with Landstar. Uh, I think I can see that too by you, you know, you still trying to learn, you know, trying to learn the lanes, trying to pick good lows, but the lows that you've been getting, you know, pretty much is, you know, pretty much, even though it's paying good, but it's still the bullshit that you got to go through. And it's just, it's just working your mental, right? Yeah. Yeah. That, that's pretty much it. I didn't really think about it until you mentioned that. That's probably what it was because I was so new. At this whole owner option, I guess it was affecting me mentally, and I didn't realize it at the time. Right, you got a whole yeah, you, that, you you you're a new you know you're a new jack in the in in the leasing game, and it's a lot it's it's a lot to take in, you know, and that's what you know. Like I said, I'm I'm not an owner operator, I'm not a lease guy, but I I talk to enough people to know that you know <laughs> leasing is <laughs> is a headache. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And some people, some people on YouTube, TikTok videos, and all like that would come in and say, "Hey, hey, ho, ho, leasing is the way to go." You know what I'm saying? But they're not telling you the, they're not telling you the behind the scenes. They're not telling you the headaches. They're not telling you that if you pick a bad load, that you might have to sit. You know, they're not telling you that. You know that. You know they're not telling you all of that. You know that's why I always say to get. Uh, for anybody that's going leasing, you know, make sure you get all the stuff out the way first, but get a team, you know, get a team together, you know, get somebody to get somebody to work your, your taxes, get somebody, uh, uh, what CPM, get somebody to work your taxes as a CPM, uh, get uh -huh. a, you know, get a, um, you know, if you have a wife, uh, at home wife or you know friend or something like that you know get one of them to you know 
book the loads, you know, tell them how you want your loads to be booked and what you want. So you so that all you have to do is just concentrate on the driving. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. So all right, so that particular day. Yeah, that 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 day. Um I already booked the load, so I put all the information in, you know, the GPS and and all that. Mm-hmm. So I was on my way to the place. I think I was I, I was in Arkansas on my way. I was going on I thirty. Um, I think I was going east. I had to go uh, go east, northeast, mm-hmm. to where I had to pick it up. I forget where I had to pick it up in Arkansas. But I'm on my way. I'm driving. I'm in the right lane. I'm doing 70 miles an hour. Right. A, a truck is behind me, but they they following at a safe distance. They probably about three, four, maybe five car lengths behind me. Okay. I'm doing 70 miles an hour. The speed limit is 70. Right. That truck that was behind me. The truck that was behind me was been following me probably for like the last 10 to 20 miles. Okay. I didn't think nothing of it. And so I'm driving along. Next, you know, I'm coming up behind a slower truck that's doing 65 miles an hour. Right. So I, I look. I look. I put my signal on. I check my mirror. And then I proceed to get over. Okay. As I get over, I'm passing this truck doing 65. And then all of a sudden, as I'm passing this truck, I look in my... My uh my driver's side mirror again, and I seen that that same truck that was behind me for those last ten to twenty miles. They were right on my ass. Okay, like, they were like right on my ass. If I had to hit the brakes for any reason, they would have been all up in the back of my trailer. Right, so I didn't think nothing of it. I did not speed up. I had to cruise set for seventy. I'm doing seventy. I passed this truck. It didn't take me long. I checked my mirrors again once I got within a safe distance to get back over put on my signal, check my mirrors again, and then I get over. At which point, this truck flew past me. Okay, now this I, this the fe- time, this this I, the fe- this the female truck that's that was that was bullshitting with you behind you and then she get over and then she blow back, I mean blow past you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. she she flew uh, now at the time I didn't know it was a female. But like I said, it's, it's I she flew past me so quick. Right. I didn't know it was a woman. I thought it was a dude at first. Okay. So I, you know, I, I ain't gonna lie to you, man. I, I don't like when people follow me that close. I really don't. Right, right. I, and, on, and that's that's crazy team. because if you, if you, if you, you know, had to had to hit the brakes or whatever, yeah. And the truck, you know, that's that's not even doing what they supposed to be doing. You're a professional driver, B. You supposed to be about. Five, six, seven, eight, uh, five, six, seven, eight seconds behind to give that space. Mm-hmm. You driving up in mm-hmm. the ass in in the ass end of the damn truck. You number one, you number one, you 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 driving all wrong. You know, you're not even, you know, you're not even supposed to give. You supposed to give that space, that distance, and mm-hmm. you know, you 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 complaining about. How people, you know, how four wheelers cut us off and and not giving us mm-hmm. our space. And here you are in the ass end of my uh trailer. Well, what's up with that? So if I would have, if I would have stopped, or if you would have stopped, it it it, it would have been your it would have been your fault. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Or some or some shit like that. All right, go ahead. Mm-hmm. Oh, she. Flew past me. I couldn't see who was driving, but she ended up flying past me. And then once she did that, she ended up cutting in front of me. She just like cut me off. Now I didn't hit the brakes or nothing like that, but she didn't use her signal. She just like literally just cut right in front of me. Okay. And after she did that, she, she slowed down. Okay, you pissed now, right? Yeah, I, I wasn't happy. I, I'm not gonna lie. Like she was following me too close. I didn't understand why all of a sudden now when I'm ready to pass a slower truck. But all of a sudden, now she want to speed up. I, I didn't understand. And I still don't don't understand why she did that. I really don't. Like, she had plenty of time to pass me. Now, I don't care. You, I mean, you can pass me at any time. But why, when I'm getting ready to pass another truck, and she decided she want to speed up, ride my ass, and then when I get, get over, she then want to cut in front of me and then slow down. I, I, I don't understand that. I really don't. Okay. So, now, yeah, I, I'm not going to lie. I wasn't happy about that. Now now you're pissed. I, 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 I. Yeah. I agree with you. Now, now you pissed. Now it's, now it's like you know. Let let me get let me get over. And 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 look at this driver giving the driver the side eye. Like bro, like 
or assist. For real though, for real, that that's what we doing out here. We we doing that. We've been we being disrespectful like that. I mean, did you do mm-hmm. did you do anything to her to initiate her her actions? That's what that's what I that's exactly what I'm about to talk about. I've had people in my comment section on that video think that I cut her off. Okay. That's why I said that I she was following me for like the last like twenty miles or something like that. I don't know how far it's been, but she was behind me for a very long time. Right. I never slowed down. I kept my truck at seventy miles an hour. I had to cruise set for seventy. Okay. I did not speed up. I did not slow down. I kept it at seventy. When I saw that truck in front of me doing sixty five, I checked my mirror. She was still behind me at the you know the, the safe distance. I got over a lane. And when I checked my mirrors again, I didn't see her behind me. So I, I didn't really, I mean, at that point, I wasn't really wasn't thinking about nothing. I just wanted to get past this truck so I can get back over so I can continue on my way so I can pick this load up. Right. A lot of people, for whatever reason, think that I cut her off or that I initiated that she was coming up behind me and all that. She was already behind me. Okay. I never cut her off, nothing like that. I just changed lanes and then, for whatever reason, she decided she wanted to speed up. I, I don't. I don't know why. Still okay. don't know why. Probably never will. Okay. So but yeah, I did not initiate it. I didn't do anything to get her pissed at me. Maybe because I was just. I didn't. I guess because I didn't pass that truck fast enough. <laughs> I guess five miles an hour faster than what they were doing wasn't good enough. I guess I don't know. Okay. But, so you. Uh, so you roll up on the side. You again giving yeah. her giving her the side eye. What happened after well, that? Well, here's the thing. When I pulled up on the side, I sped up, I pulled up on the side. As soon as I saw it was a woman, I was going to let it go. And like I said, I don't argue with women. I don't do, I don't do that kind of stuff. I got a sister. I know how women are. Right. I'm not about to sit up there and, and do that kind of stuff. Okay. As I pulled up on the side and I was about to let it go, she flipped me off. <laughs> like, she just she just flipped me off. Gave you the bird. That's <laughs> that'll do it. Yeah, that'll man. do it.